Prudential is a global retail and institutional asset management business and it has uh, an asset base of approximately 98%, South African retail and medical aid clients and 2% assets managed on behalf of the Prudential offices in the UK and Asia. John Kinsley is a Chief Operating Officer and Managing Director at Prudential Unit Trust, which we've already told you, and he joins us from our Cape Town studios to discuss how best to protect your portfolio in the midst of global market fears. Firstly, John, perhaps we can start with how concerned you are about the, the global market fears before we talk about what we should be doing with our money right now. Hi, Bronwyn, and thanks for the invitation. I think we certainly are very aware of the risks facing the world. Um, I think that my colleagues I know in the UK uh, have a number of concerns around Europe. Uh, we haven't expressed a view as to whether it'll implode or not, and I think it would be foolish to do so. But having said that, we know that uh, there are significant risks, particularly in Europe, and I think that would be our biggest concern at the moment. John, just uh, this is Low uh, in the studio here in Joburg. I'm looking at your exposure to South Africa equities. It's uh, it's, thir it's 13 percent. Is that roughly what the average is, or are you or are you below or above the average? When you say 13 percent, I think you're looking at a particular fund yes. uh, that we hold, and so, so that particular fund, fund is our Inflation Plus Fund, where we hold about 30 percent in equity. Uh, half of it is offshore, and the other half, roughly half, is in South Africa. Right. But you're generally more bullish, ever so slightly, on foreign equity, which follows on the discussion that we just had with Linda Eads right now, uh, where ReCM is finding value in developed markets, territories where others, may I say, fear to trade right now. John, would you share that thesis? Yeah, I think, Bronwyn, we have now for the last 18 months uh, preferred offshore equity. We felt that they were, there were better valuations offshore than locally. We were not one of the managers that felt that South Africa was massively expensive. We have for the last 12 months or so said that we felt, felt that South Africa was at best fair value. I mean, there were pockets of value and po pockets of expensive stocks, obviously. But as a market, we felt it was about fair value. Um, but having said that, we felt it was better value in markets such as Germany, for obvious reasons. Uh, in Korea, uh, we took an overweight position. So we have felt that many developed markets uh, were better value than South Africa. In terms of your global bonds, are you in, in government treasuries or are you in corporate, uh, corporate credit? No, most of our global bond exposure is in corporates, mm -hmm. uh, investment grade corporate bonds, mm -hmm. simply because uh, we believe that, particularly if you look at the US uh, uh, treasuries, they're at very low levels. And although if there is a major uh, uh, problem in the world, they could go lower, we feel that the uh, propensity is for those, for those yields to rise rather over time than get too much lo lower. Mm -hmm. So it having said that, uh, I think I looked at some figures the other day and the US 30 year bond over the last 12 months has done over 30 percent in dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, your problem is, is that you can't put all your money in that sort of asset class, but that's, that's the lesson of diversification. John, obviously this is the inflation plus fund that we are talking about and you would expect your high play here on in SA inflation linked bonds. You're sitting at around 31 percent. How long have you had that position? Broadman, we've held that position now for well over two years, uh, sort of between 25 and 32 percent odd. Our strategic asset allocation is around about 30. We're very comfortable with that. We are aware that uh, if you have a look at current yields, uh, inflation linkers are really only offering about 2 percent, and so people might say, well, you know, 2 percent, why are you going for them? Very simply, if you compare them to cash, you're getting 2 percent real on inflation linkers, you're getting zero on cash. So we prefer inflation linkers to cash uh, in, in terms of this particular portfolio that we're discussing. When I, when I look at the portfolio also, you know, I get the sense that you must think that uh, the situation in the United States and in Europe is going to remain subdued for a long time. Uh, valuation will remain compelling for a long time in foreign equities. Uh, so, so the question is, um, in that situation, if inflation isn't coming back anytime soon, uh, Aren't you seeing value coming back into the South African market where we can get returns from growth rather than inflation? You know, we, we see certainly global inflation. We would not be at all surprised to see it being very subdued for some time mm. and therefore rates remaining longer uh, or lower for a lot longer than people expect. But I think that's factored largely into the price already. With regard to South Africa, we've got some other dynamics. Uh, we don't, we're not foreseeing uh, any spike in inflation. 
uh, but certainly we would argue that the break-even inflation rate at the moment of five to five and a half percent if you compare linkers to conventional bonds, we think that's reasonable over the next five years or so. So that would be our prognosis around inflation, although to try and forecast it in the short term is almost impossible. The listed property environment in South Africa, you've got 8% allocation in the Inflation Plus Fund. Do you anticipate a continued good performance from this asset class? We know over the last 10 years it's been a brilliant performer. Do you think that it can sustain? Broadwin, I think it would be foolish to expect it to, to continue giving the sort of returns it has over the last couple of years. It has been a, a stellar performer. Um, and certainly we, we certainly at the beginning of this year wouldn't have felt that enlisted property was going to give the returns it has over the last 12 months. Having said that, the reason we're prepared to hold, I think currently on, on current value, on current uh, market prices, you're correct, it's about 8%, but I think there's a strategic position of about 10% in property in the, in the fund. And we hold that again because we quite like the forward yield. The forward yield is now at about 7.5%. Um, that certainly is better than cash, slightly better, well, slightly better than bonds in certain cases. So we're prepared to hold that. We're not uh, naive to the fact that there is some risk. Um, but we are comfortable that we are being adequately rewarded with that yield for the risk we are taking. We've been as high as 15%. Uh, we wouldn't possibly be that comfortable now, so we're happy to hold an 8 to 10% uh, exposure. Could you kindly give us an update on the impact of the new tax regime on, I think it's your equity, I, th I think it's your dividend fund, your dividend equity fund, your dividend value fund? Uh, there's no impact at all on our dividend maximizer fund. That's an ordinary equity fund simply investing in higher dividend yield stocks. Mm. So all that would mean is that like any other equity fund, the dividend withholding tax would be applied to those dividends as they flow through the fund. Mm. If you're referring to our dividend income fund, right. which was essentially a dividend for interest swap, that fund is entirely closed. Okay. Okay. And John, just in terms of the South African environment right now, how confident are you that if we see turmoil, further turmoil in the developed world, we will actually be able to stand strong, strong throughout any additional turbulence? Bronwyn, you know, I think I'm not convinced that, that, that that's true in any way. Um, I think if there's a major fallout in Europe, we will feel the headwinds of that without any doubt in South Africa, uh, as it is true in anywhere else in the world. But certainly if there's a major uh, blowout in Europe, we will feel it here. It's our biggest trading partner. And I think Jill Marcus has gone on record to say she has major concerns around that. All we are trying to highlight uh, through a fund like Inflation Plus is that if there is risk in the world, and if you want to try and de-risk yourself, uh, I think there are three, I'm gonna highlight three possible ways of doing it. Either you can default entirely to cash, which might be fine in the short term, but quite frankly, we don't see that as a medium or long-term solution at all, simply because South African cash rates, real rates are below, you, you're getting negative real rates. In other words, the interest rate is either at inflation or below inflation. Just the second option is to continue to hold risk assets, but buy insurance in the portfolio. So hedge yourself through the futures and options markets. Uh, now, there are a number of asset managers that have done that very well uh, in times of crisis. Uh, having said that, uh, it costs you. There's a premium associated with, with hedging yourself, and one has to accept that as, in fact, the risk rises, that premium tends to rise. So much like uh, insuring your motor car, you're paying a premium, you hope it never happens, but there's a cost to the portfolio in order to have that peace of mind. The third route is the route that we actually prefer, and we've done that in Inflation Plus is we diversify as much as we can between different asset classes in order to benefit from the fact that in the same market circumstances, different asset classes behave differently. So you want some levers moving in one way whilst the others are moving in the opposite direction. And that's the simple sort of way of doing it. Having said that, you would find that if there was a major blowout in Europe, your risk assets would certainly feel that head on. John, One would hope, we however, that possibly your inflation linkers and certainly your global bond exposure would hopefully move in the other direction to give you some degree of protection. 